Constraints are something you use to stop objects from doing certain things or to make them follow certain rules. The only thing they affect is the object's transform properties, its location, rotation or scale. They never change the object in any other way. That might sound limiting, but they are very useful. Let's use this cube to see how they work. Select the cube and go to the constraints panel. Here we can add a lot of different constraints by clicking Add Object Constraint. Let's select Limit Location. The constraint is now added to the list. This constraint doesn't do anything by default. We can still move the cube any way we want. If we activate the minimum x and the maximum x, the cube can't move along x anymore. This is because the minimum value x can have is 0 and the maximum value it can have is also 0. If we increase the maximum to 5, we can now move the cube between 0 and 5 along x. When we reach 0, it stops. And when we reach 5, it also stops. The location of the object is being limited. Now, Let's make so it can't move in any direction. This is done by setting all values to zero. So, what happens if we try to move the cube now? Well, as you might expect, nothing. It stays in place. However, if we take a look in the properties panel, you can see that the cube is actually moving. We just can't see it in the viewport. This is because the constraint is always moving it back into place, constraining it but the cube is not really in the center. If we toggle the visibility of the constraint, the cube suddenly jumps to its relocation. It is no longer constrained. To be able to move objects when they aren't visibly moving is a bit confusing. This behavior can be stopped with this checkbox. Let's reset the cube's location and activate the constraint again, this time with 4 transform activated. Now when I try to move the cube, nothing happens. The cube remains in the center of the viewport and the location values in the properties panel remains at zero. Without for transform, the cube is moved and then constrained. With for transform, the constraint stops it from moving at all. Turn off the constraint for now. Currently, this convert setting is set to world space. To see what it does, the cube needs to have a parent. Let's add a sphere for this purpose. Parent the cube to the sphere. As you can see, moving the sphere moves them both since the parent affects itself and the child. Moving the cube doesn't affect the sphere since children don't affect parents. When an object has a parent, it has two different spaces, world space and local space. The world space is where the cube is in relation to the center of the scene. If I move the sphere two units up, the cube now has a position in world space of C2. If I move the sphere 3 units along X, the cube now has a position in world space of C2 X3. However, if I select the cube, you can see in the properties panel that it apparently has a position of 0, 0, 0. This is the local space, the space in relation to the parent. The cube hasn't really moved, the sphere has, the cube just moved with it. If I instead take the cube and move it, the values changes in the properties panel. This is because it is now moving in relation to its parent. So, how does this affect the constraints? Let's try activating the constraint again to see. Now the cube is in the center of the scene again, like before. Moving the sphere makes no difference. The cube is limited to being in the center of the scene. What if we switch from world space to local space? Now the cube follows the sphere. However, if I try to move just the cube, I can't. It stays in the same position. When we limit the location in world space, we limit how much it can be moved around in the scene. When we limit the location in local space, we limit how much it can be moved around the parent. Finally, I am going to show you how to use constraints on bones in armatures. Let's remove our objects and add an armature. Enter edit mode and move the bone two units to the left. Copy the bone, move it one unit to the right and parent it to the first bone. Now we have a parent-child relationship we can use for testing. 
When we enter pose mode, we have a new panel called Bone Constraints. Here we can add constraints to bones in our armature instead of just adding them to objects. This allows us to control the behavior of individual bones as well, which is very useful. The major difference with how bone constraints work compared to object constraints is that there are two more spaces available. Let's add a limit location to our child bone so we can see. Here in the list we also have local with parent and pose space, in addition to world space and local space. Let's go over all four to see what they do. With world space selected, if I set the limit location to zero on all values, the bone is limited to the center of the scene. It works just like on objects. Let's switch to local space. This works just like before as well. The bone is limited in relation to its parent. Moving the parent bone moves both bones, but I'm unable to just move the child bone. Now let's try local with parent. Moving the parent makes no difference. The child bone stays in place. What this one does is limiting the bone to the rest position. Wherever the bone is in edit mode is the position the bone is limited in relation to. If we enter edit mode and move the bone one unit up, you can see that the change is reflected in pose mode. The final type is pose space. Right now, it looks like it does the same thing as world space, but it doesn't. It is not in relation to the scene, it is in relation to the armature. So no matter how we move the armature in object mode, this bone will stick to its origin point. This concludes the basics of constraints. There are a lot of different constraints to choose from, all having different controls and all giving different results. But no matter which you use, every single one of them makes the object, or bone, behave in a way it normally wouldn't. Thanks for watching.